What's up YouTube, Russ here, welcome to the Trail Hunter and today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick overview of my cook system for the 100 mile walk of the South Downs Way uh, which consisted of this MSR pocket rocket stove and a few other bits including my food so yeah, let's go. For those of you who are new to my channel, I believe that the best way to explore the world is on foot. I'm offering you hiking video guides, gear reviews, gear lists, travel tips, hiking tips and much much more. So if you're new here, do consider subscribing. Okay, for this cook system you will need one MSR pocket rocket stove which comes with its own bag, a titanium cook pot, a measuring cup, a lid, a pair of aluminium grabbers and the stove itself. Separately you should buy a flint lighter, the isobutane and propane mixture gas bottle. A plastic spork, you also need half a litre of water and whatever food you're planning on taking with you on the hike. I kept all of my food in this uh, little orange dry bag, I wanted it to be a different colour from all my other dry bags so I could tell which one was the food. The food I took with me uh, was um, a selection of bars and dehydrated milk so I'll just go through all of that with you now. As a little snack I bought some honey roasted almonds, I bought a rapid recovery uh, kind of energy drink with some proteins and electrolytes. I bought four of these dehydrated meals, I bought four rice and dried fruit fruit bars, about eight of these uh, Nescafe 3-in-1s, six of these Cliff bars, the uh, chocolate chip ones were my favourites, four of these Nutri-Grain bars, about six of these crunchy wheat bars, and that was about it. The South Downs Way cuts through so many towns and villages, I just couldn't resist the thought of uh, stopping off in those uh, for a spot of lunch every day, and what that enabled me to do was carry a little bit less food, um, so yeah, I just basically took snack bars, um, Cliff bars for breakfast, and dehydrated meals for my evening meal when I set up camp, so that was basically it. What's good about taking food in bar format uh, on these really long hikes is that you can put them in your hip belt pockets um, and in your shirt pockets as well so that you can basically eat while you're walking so you can really rack up those miles. So what I also want to talk about with you today is uh, how I cooked those meals and what kind of cook system that I used. This is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2 uh, Ultra Lightweight Stove. It folds up along with the gas bottle into this really compact little uh, titanium cup. I'll upload a full review of this Pocket Rocket Stove in the near future but for now I just want to give you an overview of my cook system and how I cook my meal. Okay so I've got these uh, adventure food dehydrated meals it's even got the price on it still which is £5.50 each so they're a little bit dear for one meal but the convenience is so so good and actually I really quite like the flavour of these I haven't actually tried this pasta carbonara one yet I wanted to save that for this uh, for this video but my favorite was definitely the uh, the mushroom pasta one that actually tasted really really good my least favorite one was the curry one because when it comes out it just looks like sick it's really disgusting but um, yeah the pasta ones were really really good they're a bit like a posh pot noodle okay so now I'm gonna um, set up the stove and then put some water in it and show you how it all works um, maybe give you a couple of the pros and cons about using this system them. Um, and yeah see how we get on okay so let's open the pocket rocket stove it comes in its own little hole bag thing and then you just kind of open that up it's a little bit difficult to get out of the bag you've got to kind of jimmy it out of there but once you get it out it's fine just discard that to one side uh, the lid has got a little notch in it so you can grab it when it's hot and it's also got a little strainer piece on it which is really good so if you've got a, a little bit too much liquid in there you can just grab it hold it out and uh, drain out the liquid, the excess liquid that's in there. Next in there is the stove itself. It kind of folds up like this. It's got its little arm, folds up, really compact. It's absolutely tiny, this thing. It's got a little valve there and then you screw that on. Just put this down. Uh, this is the aluminium little grappler that I came, that came with it. That's for picking up when it's hot. Separately is the uh, flint lighter. I recommend definitely using one of those because it doesn't matter how windy it is, you can always use this. You can use it in the wet. I don't particularly like bringing lighters with me because if it gets wet, they can actually stop working with the flint inside. At least you know you've got that security with this. If it rains, it's always going to work. Inside, this also came separately. This is the uh, isobutane and propane mixture little gas bottle in there. I've used this about eight or nine times now and it's still got pretty much about half the gas in there so it's lasting absolutely ages. That's really good. It comes with attached is a uh, plastic measuring cup as well which is good for drinking something out of and this of course is the titanium cup that it comes with as well. Okay so now I've got all this stuff laid out the first thing that we're going to do is um, take the cap off the bottle just like that and then we're going to grab the stove. We're going to make sure that the valve on the stove is um, tightly shut before we screw it on otherwise gas is going to pour out 
and you do not want that. Okay, so now we're going to screw this on nice and easy. You shouldn't hear any hissing. Get it on nice and tight, not too tight so that you break the thread of the bottle. And there it is, that's your stove. Now we're going to get about half a litre of water. Put that into the titanium cup, just like that. We're going to put this down to one side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that we can easily light it. Uh, because we've got the flint, it's a little bit windy. Uh, I'm pretty confident it's going to work. Um, first or second time and we'll see how that goes so we're just gonna put the gas on just a little bit just like that just so you can hear a light hissing and we're gonna get our flint and the way these work is you have your flint uh, facing away from you and then you have your striker piece which is this piece and it's got some little teeth on it with a flat edge and you get that flat edge and then you strike it away from you like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this like this point it straight at the stove there we go third time lucky I don't know if I can pick this up now, I don't know if you can see the flame, it's a nice bright blue flame. I'm going to turn it up a bit. There we go. Now all we're going to do, keep it on a low heat for now, and pick up the uh, the water, gently place it on top like so. Turn the stove about halfway, and then that is going to heat up the water. Let's let that uh, go for a few minutes. As it's beginning to heat up, I can see all the bubbles in the bottom, I'll actually start turning up a little bit more. The reason why I do that is because the titanium cut needs to be the thing that's heating up the water, not the flame. So I want to heat up the titanium cup first. When the titanium cup's hot enough, then I'll put the stove on full work. Just uh, saves a little bit of gas that way. As you can see, there's some bubbles developing in the bottom of the cup right now. While that's heating up, um, it's good to mention that this entire cook kit um, probably cost me about 60 pounds from Cotswold Outdoor. Um, you would have thought that the gas bottle would have just come included with it when you buy it, but. Uh, it's not, I think that's like an extra 15 quid on top of that. So it's not the cheapest of, um, of stoves by any means. I have looked on Amazon um, recently and they're actually going a lot cheaper than that. But I'm the kind of guy, I, I like to go in store and take a good look at these things and see what they're like and you know get a proper feel of what I'm buying. Especially with um, things like this where it's like little gadgety things. I don't like buying clothes online either starting to boil now. With this you don't want to bring it completely to the boil so that it's raging, you want to just have it simmering and steaming just so it's like probably about 90 to 95 degrees, not not anything over 100 because it's just going to be way too hot. Okay so I'm going to turn it up even more now, turn it up even more, it's good on a cold day, keeps your hands nice and warm. Okay that is about done so I'm going to switch it off now nice and gently. I'm going to get my uh, aluminium grabber, I'm just going to take it off, put it on the floor so it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to get my dehydrated milk. I'm going to open this up just like that. And the instructions say to pour in water up to line nine, which is about halfway up this bag. Uh, just probably enough to, to cover the pasta that's inside. I'm going to show you that's what it looks like inside. So I'm going to put this on the floor, kind of open up the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to grab this with my grabber and then pour it in up to line nine. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to wait about eight minutes and just kind of keep stirring it. And keep stirring it like that. After the eight minutes is up, it's good to eat. Let's give this one a go. I haven't tried the carbonara yet. It looks pretty good actually. It's quite nice. Got some peppers in there. Got some like spinach and seasoning. It's all right. Doesn't really taste like carbonara, but it tastes quite tasty. What I really like about these dehydrated meals is that they're really light. They taste pretty good. They fill you up. They've got all of the carbohydrates and calories and everything that you need in there for the next day ahead so uh, having one of these at the uh, end of the day is a really good little treat. A lot of people do actually just cold soak their food so instead of having one of these they'll just have like some beans in a jar or something like that but I just really like having like, something nice and hot at the end of the day. Uh, it gives me something to look forward to when I'm at camp and uh, it puts something hot in your belly as well. I just think that's a really good uh, thing to have at the end of the day. So far I've gotten really well with this MSR Pocket Rocket stove. I do find the bottom of the gas bottle is getting a little bit rusty now, so yeah, try not to keep it too wet. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thanks again for watching this episode of the Trail Hunter guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found it at all useful, then hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to head over to thetrailhunter.com where you'll find my full cook list uh, on that website. I'll put the link in the description below when I've put it up there. Um, if you're new here, do consider hitting that subscribe button below. I'm uploading videos about twice or three times a week at the moment. And also I'm going traveling in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Okay guys, that's about it for this episode. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So now we're going to screw this on.
nice and easy. 